This is Josh Olmstead. Welcome to Northwest Disc Golf's coverage of the Zoo Town Open, presented by Inc. Realty Group. This is an A-tier event out of Missoula, Montana, with round two being played at the Blue Mountain Disc Golf Course. Glad you could join us. If you enjoy our coverage, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and also check out our Patreon page. Joining me on the coverage today, we have the TD of the event, Brian Beardham. You all ready to go, Brian? Let's do this. Awesome. So on the second round card today, we have Christian Dietrich, Jordan Castro, McCoy Connor, Justin Cornoyer, and Ben Squires. Five Northwest pros ready to battle it out at a one of the major events in the Western region. So starting us off, we have hole one. It's a 350 foot par three. It's a tricky opening drive. And uh, starting us off, Christian, who shot a unbelievable 13 under in the first round. Yeah, that first round was just outstanding. Yeah, it's uh, hard to hard to follow that up, but uh, we'll see if he can keep it going. Uh, Jordan Castro, second from Burnsville, Minnesota, coming over here to Montana. Yeah, he's been here um, a couple times, and he really likes coming back. So we're we're happy to have him. Absolutely, yeah. And he's uh, just shy of a thousand rated at nine ninety eight. And uh, up third, we got McCoy Connor. He is the local, holding it down for Missoula. He is a longtime pro with about a decade in the field. Ooh, and that is Justin Cornoyer hitting that early tree from Rapid City, South Dakota. And uh, last but not least, we have Ben Squires from Coeur d'Alene, Iowa, or Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, uh, who is also the defending champion here. Yeah, he's got a target on him this year for sure. Absolutely. This is where you don't want to be on this hole. Yeah, that is a really long upshot, and he has to take it overhand. It actually looks like he got a pretty good shot just to have a long putt at this. Yeah, that's about as good as you can hope for there. Good luck, Dave. Oh, so close. Yeah, it gives it a good run uphill, but it's kind of hard to start the first hole of the day with a 60-foot putt. So we got Ben coming in for his birdie. Oh, wishes he had that one back, I think. Yeah, let's uh, see if any of these guys are going to be able to capitalize. Oh, and another one, about a half inch short. So that's a good tap in there for Christian. Yeah, so Christian, after a smoking hot round one, uh, just decides he's going to take another stroke on the field on uh, hole one. So excellent work for Christian. Yeah, Christian grew up in Missoula. He now lives in Helena, but we still claim him here in Missoula. So this is still kind of his home course. Yeah, it's good to see uh, someone with a little local knowledge. And, you know, Christian, I, I worked with Christian a little bit um, on our last video with the Queen City Classic as he was the tournament director for that event. So he is both a TD and a pro jack of all trades in the community. Yeah, so, so this cool. hole two uh, really got a, a big right to left cross slope. Um, you really don't want to go down this hill at all. Yeah, it's a uh, it, definitely it's a tricky little hole. It's it's so short that it makes it you know it feels like a must make birdie, but uh, you know it's actually a lot steeper slope than it looks here on camera. Yeah, and Christian got pretty lucky that that roll stopped there. It can go several hundred feet down this hill. Yeah, and uh, that's going to be a real consistent theme on this course. It's kind of, uh, it's definitely mountain golf. There's a lot of steep slopes, a lot of uphill, a lot of downhill. Um, really makes for a really exciting course. So here we got Ben taking the forehand line. That's looking really good. Yeah. Oh, no. And just when you think it, it is parked, there it goes. So... That looks like it's uh, stopping about 80 feet down the hill, so he will have a long, long run for birdie, probably looking more like upshot for par. And here's Justin taking the big spike, the high uh, spike road. line. Yeah. Oh, and it stayed up there. A lot of times they roll from up there, so he's pretty lucky. Yep. So here's Ben after that long roll away, coming back uphill. Yeah, oh, that's and a nice, good shot. nice shot. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh oh. Ooh. Oh boy, that's the home course roll right there, non roll anyway. Yep, yep, you could hear him asking for it. He knows where that could end up if you go high off these baskets. I like it. That was, that was a great run for Justin. But couldn't connect, so Jordan Castro looks like he is going to take uh, the only birdie on the card. So he gets a stroke on the group as Christian taps out his par. Yeah, I like those old uh, Innova yellow band baskets because they just have that distinctive sound if you hit that top band. They do, for sure. That's never a good sound to hear, but yep. Yep. Like it's like telling everyone on the course uh, that you just missed. <laughs> so with that deuce, uh, Jordan is uh, six strokes back of Christian, uh, getting under for the round as we move on to hole three. Um, hole three is a 390 foot par three, um, and here you can really start to see some of the big fun downhill drives on this course. Um, it's a big dogleg right that slopes down and around a big grove of trees, um, and it's also a blind drive, so you're forced to sort of pick your shot and let it sail um, really hard green to reach. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, what's the strategy here? And yeah, like you said, it's really hard green to reach, and if you do reach it, you don't want to go long because there's about a 200-foot drop-off behind it as well. Yeah, certainly, you know, dangerous golf. It's definitely a, a good hole just to grab your par and, and walk away. No need for dramatics. Yeah, we have a saying that boring golf is good golf at Blue Mountain. So, yeah. So, McCoy here. Yeah, McCoy. Trying to go for the turnover line, and Perfect. it's looking really good. We wait, see. Wait, wait, wait. Just got held up, but he's on the edge of the green there. Probably 45. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good spot to be. Pretty much just caught that last tree. I thought he was going to get around there, get a skip onto the green. Nice, and uh, huh? that's yeah. looking like a good shot from Ben, you know. Put it in a safe spot right in the middle of the fairway. Yep, and the opening should be in the opening in the trees there, so yeah. Just going the high route. Left. Yeah, he's got those yeah. long arms. You can tell that, you know, he's he's got a lot of power and and he's a young guy, so he's only just going to get th he's just going to throw further and further as the years go by. Yeah, I had the pleasure of playing with him a few years ago and uh he was good then and he just keeps continuing to get better. Yeah, absolutely. He's a uh, um, you know, actually the lowest rated player on the card, but he has actually 10 tournament wins this year. Um, but they're all been in relatively small events. So, you know, he'd really love, this would be sort of his big, uh, coming out a tier win if he could get this event. So there's uh, McCoy laying up for his three. And here we got Ben. This is a risky shot. If you go for it. Oh, oh wow. He did commit to going for yeah. it. Unfortunately. You can tell here out on the sort of this high part of the hill, the wind is really kicking up. You can sort of hear it here. And that's a good that, par putt there. Yep, yeah, yeah. Looked like he was coming back into some headwind. Those are always the testy putts early in that tournament round. Yeah, and you know Justin wants that back. Oh. Oh, and Christian as well. That's not something you see very often. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. So um, a rare slip up for... Christian, I'm 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 guessing he may not have had any bogeys last round, so that might be his first of the tournament. I believe it is, yeah. 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 Well, we'll see if that opens up the door. Um, so on hole three, Christian gets a four. Justin also takes a four. Everyone else gets a three, uh, and Jordan is now five strokes back for first place. Everyone else just bunched up a couple strokes behind that. As we move on to a big hole, hole four. Um, can you tell me about this one? Uh, yeah, so the tee pad is set just far enough from the crest of the hill where it's hard to throw it down, but you need to throw it down to make it down the hillside and down into the ravine where the basket is, and the basket's up on a rise in the ravine, so there's a lot of dynamics to this hole. Yeah, no, it's it's a really fun drive to watch, because, um, yeah, just like you were saying, um, you know, you have to throw it really, really low to get under these trees at the bottom of the hill and try to skip it down. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, everything is wanting to push the disc up and get it into those trees. Yeah, Jordan had a great drive there with that skip. McCoy came up just a little short. But... 
Get in. And here Ben is yeah, going way right, but uh, that's Ooh, got, that got a good chance to skip. Oh, he's getting a good slide Possibly down. He'll have about a forty, about a fifty footer from down there. Yep. And here's Christian. He just has one of the smoothest strokes. Really effortless power. That's definitely. Oh, and the same ooh. tree got it. Yeah, he had enough power to get all the way to the to the green, but just didn't get quite get the tree love. It worked pretty well. It's a stable one. Yeah, it is. I didn't think it'd be. <laughs> yeah, our spotter that was here on the day said there was only. Well, I guess I should. Wait. Was he saying how many birdies there were? Yeah, there was. Um, Karina Knowles, actually the the person who won uh, pro women's field. Um, got this today and uh, got it in the first round and she was oh, the nice. only one to get it in the first round oh that's awesome yeah no it's definitely uh, it's a solid field here and uh, a really you know, large pro women's field as well oh so yeah Jordan going a little bit long he's got a tricky comebacker here oh no Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what happens on that side of the chains. Unfortunate break that's there. unfortunate, yeah. Go from birdie to bogey. Yeah, he had a, he, I think he had the closest drive as well. So Rough three putt, but looks like everyone else here is cleaning out their pars. Yeah, that's definitely a tough hole to deuce. Really a... Uh, Kind of a bonus birdie for the pro, even for the pro field that'd be a bonus birdie it is yeah 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 and that's one of the things i like about this course um is that you know there's a nice mix of some some really attackable holes some you know pretty tough holes and then a handful of just really monster mountain holes uh so with that uh jordan goes back to even par and uh, christian's lead is at six so far, none of these guys have gotten under par, so, uh, you know, let's see if they can turn it up on these next few holes. Yeah, these, um, and with these next couple holes are really the attackable part of the stretch, so, yep, yeah, they should be able to get a couple here. Yeah, no, these are some, uh, you know, this is a big hyzer drive, um, but, you know, with the power that these guys have, and, and I know all, all five of these guys have the power to reach most of these holes pretty easily. Yeah, this one's just a really fun hyzer. You just put it up there and let it float back to the basket. And wow, just like that. It's got some power. Yeah, right? yeah. And, you know, when you've got the power to just take that pure hyzer line, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, I I only throw it about 340, so I would have to be taking that narrow middle line. This is a lot harder. Oh, and that's a great shot there. Oh, if it'll sit. He's still pretty good there, I think. Yep. So here is Justin taking a really wide hyzer there. Ooh, yeah, a little wide. Yep, didn't quite get the skip there. And uh, Jordan rounding out the bunch. Five straight hyzers. Oh, and that's uh, the best of the group. That's a great shot. Oh, that looked like it was online till that branch. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tricky spot to putt from, and uh, there's Christian maybe trying to shake off the demons from that uh, misstep on hole three. Takes a nice bird. And here's Jordan stepping up for his deuce. Good work on this hole other than Justin. Looks like uh, we're going to have four birdies. Yeah, I'm sure Justin's pretty disappointed not to get this one, but there, yeah. there's more yet to come. Absolutely. So, yeah, Justin takes the par. Everyone else gets to one down on the round. Lead is still at six strokes as we move on to hole six. Uh, so hole six, 418 foot par three. Um, another good chance to let a big hyzer drive rip. I kind of like, you know, hole five, you get the 315 foot hyzer, and then hole six is really just the same thing, but add an extra 100 feet. Um, but uh, it's to a really tight green, so it's definitely, you know, a, a very big version of the last hole. Yeah, they uh, they call this hole the dancing trees, 
because those trees like to dance out in front of your disc, just like McCoy just found out there once in a while. Yep. Oh, a little bit short. Yeah, and you've got that skippy green down there, so you know even if you get down to the basket, it's it's a easy to skip into those bushes, and they are thick back there. Yeah, that's a pretty good bunker over there. Yeah. In the hole. In the hole. Oh. Ooh. Or you just do that. Yeah, that looked like. Uh, Ace run there for Christian. Yeah. Getting some props from the group. Excellent drive. And here we've got Jordan taking the same line. That's looking pretty good. Tracking to the pin. Yeah, very nice. Oh, that's a great shot. So one of the things that uh, I was interested in bringing up about this event, since you've got a, a lot of the local knowledge, is, um, you know, um, one of the interesting things about this event was for a while there, it seemed like every year whoever won the Zoo Town Open would go on to win Worlds. We had uh, Dave Felberg in 2008, uh, Val and Avery Jenkins in 2009, and Sarah Hokum in 2012. Can you tell me a little bit about, uh, about that? Yeah, so this was the only event that each one of those played in that year that they had won that year on their way to Worlds. So, uh... So we, we kind of had a little fun with that and said, if you want to win Worlds, you got to come play Zoo, you got to come win Zoo Town Open. And, uh, and that stuck for a few years. We were, uh, we were pretty happy about that. And uh, I actually told Sarah when she won that I said, so you won this, now you're going to go win Worlds in, uh, I think it was Charlotte that year. And uh, she actually gave us a shout out um, on her award speech at Worlds, uh, saying that she'd won this tournament in Montana and they said she was going to win Worlds and here she is. I used to That's a fantastic story, and uh, yeah, you know, it's definitely one of the one of the big events that draws some of those national pros. Uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to get them out to the you know northwest states compared to some of the big uh, tournament areas. Uh, so hole seven, par three, three hundred feet, and uh, this is way uphill. Um, so here we're going to see the other side of the mountain course, uh, the slog to the top. Yeah, this is only it's only 300 feet, but it plays all of, I'd say, 475 or so. It's, it's very steep. Yeah, you were telling me they call this one uh, the Sisyphus Hill because uh, you just, you know, you push your boulder up to the top and you can get all the way up there and still roll all the way back down to the beginning. Yeah, that's a painful thing to watch. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It really makes for some interesting putting up there if you don't, if you don't, like you said, if you get in band, you don't know where it's going to stop. Yeah, and that's a, that's a great drive that's there by McCoy. A, yeah. So those trees right there, we call those the gates of heaven. And so Coy is knocking on it, maybe even just past the gates there. Slipped on it. Yeah, no, it's a really solid drive. Um, it's kind of hard to adjust how your disc's going to fly when you're playing this far uphill. You know, it's one thing to go 20, 30 feet uphill, but this is more like 100. Yeah, all of 100, I would say, yeah. Yeah, and, and you can see it a lot better um, at the angle coming, looking down at the pin. That was a good bid there, Ben. It's almost enough to get you, give you vertigo. <laughs> so here's Christian with oh. his birdie putt. Oh, He's had a couple of those come really close to some nice birdies here. And McCoy, after the best drive of the group, goes just up over the top. So Yeah, you don't want to be short and hit the cage, so he over overcompensated for it. That's what happens. So it looks like everybody in the group is going to take pars. So, you know, boring golf is, uh, is good golf. Yeah, for the most part, yep. You'd yep, like to well, get a couple of these anyway, but yeah. Absolutely, but you know, that's definitely a hole that can, I can imagine you can get up bogey, double bogey real easily. Real quick, yeah. So moving on, we get to hole eight. This is a 276 foot par three. Another tricky sort of blind tee shot. It's a fairly straightforward flick shot around the trees, um, but you have to make sure to clear the sort of guardian trees around the green. Yeah, those guardian trees are actually um, Not very good, formed but... around some old bunkers back in, uh, just before World War II, they used this area as a tank um, artillery range. So they yeah. would bring the tanks up and park them in those, you see where those hills are, they'd park mm -hmm. the tanks in there and use this as live fire range. That's a cool piece of history. 
Yeah, sort of, um, you know, I wanted to ask a little bit about sort of how this course came to be. You mentioned that uh, this is one of the only courses on um, U.S. national forest land. Yeah, it's one of only a handful of courses on nas- non-lease national forest land. Um, there's a lot of a lot of courses on ski hills, of course, but this is non-lease property. Um, and this was a really organic course. It started out just with some people painting some trees back in... Oh, I don't know, the late 80s probably, and then they formalized it in the mid-90s, and it's kind of evolved since then. Um, And actually, the first nine baskets were put in um, from the world's biggest day of disc golf. Um, I think it was in 98 or 99, they had the most people, or the second most people maybe in the country, play the world's biggest day of disc golf um, in Missoula, so they won nine baskets. Great. Oh, wow. That's a huge putt. Yeah, we're going to have to take a replay on that and nice. get to see. Yeah, and, you know, no need to jump putt. He just has a lot of snap, and that is center cage. Perfect, yep. Gets on the board. Oh. oh. Christian must have used them all up the first round. Yeah, he's had a lot of heartbreakers this round. Clearly a good putter. Uh, but, you know, sometimes if you're just an inch off, that's, you know, an inch off is the same as a foot off. Yeah. Uh, Christian cleans up. Looks like everyone else is going to clean up the three. So Justin uh, gets a stroke on the card. Good job by him. You know, he had some struggles in these first seven holes. So we'll see if this is uh, what sparks a turnaround for Justin on this So yeah, Christian uh, still with a six-stroke lead, uh, two under for the round, along with Jordan. Everyone else just a couple strokes back of that, but uh, everyone's at even or under par. So you know, this is where they're going to start going, trying to go a little further under. Hole nine, uh, 204 foot par three. This is definitely one of the important birdies to get. Yeah, this is really a must-get. Shortest hole on the course, but it's got a dangerous green behind it where you can go a long ways behind it. Yeah, this is a definitely a, a very touchy control shot. Um, I'm interested to see how these pros tackle it. You go straight at it. You can take a turnover putter. You can take this sort of skip mid-range shot you see Jordan doing here. Whoa. Yeah, Nate Sexton actually played this one year as a forehand kind of anti-flex that came down into a spike and hmm. aced it with that. Wow. Which is... It, you can't even see that line from where the camera is here. It's such a crazy line. Yeah, and, and the nice thing about an ace is you have to imagine that if it doesn't go in the basket, it could it could have gone 40 feet long. It could go 100 feet long, yeah. Yeah, yeah it can get down the hill in a hurry. And, uh, ben here taking sort of the putter hyzer. He gets a good stop at the tree. Yep. Here's Jordan putting with his uh, P2. He's sponsored by Innova. Justin here, jump putting. Yep, and uh, solid birdie by Justin. So getting on a roll here. Missing a 12 foot early in the round. Christian right in the ship a little bit. And sorry, that was actually McCoy with the birdie there, not Justin. So Jordan will tap out his par. And Ben will do the same. So that's going to wrap up our front nine here. Excellent work. Uh, so Christian leading the way here in round two, three under par, giving him a seven stroke lead over Jordan in second place at nine under. Uh, McCoy with that birdie gets to minus two for the round. And uh, hope you will join us on the back nine coverage.